Have you noticed that Affinity decks have been running Experimental Frenzy lately? Well, Wizards came along and was like, hey kid, I heard you like Frenzies, and so they gave us those little rare candies, you know, so that we can evolve our Experimental Frenzies into Mystic Forges, brand new from Corset 2020. This card is insane, it's a strict upgrade to Experimental Frenzy, at least for Affinity, and so we're gonna try to do some particularly busted stuff with it today. Hopefully it goes well. It's gonna be super awesome. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck while also supporting the channel, you can get your cards from tcgplayer.com by clicking the decklist link down below. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you wanted to join the Marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss future Fan Fridays episodes as well as many other things. This video is sponsored by mtgonlinestore.com. For some cool and creative MTG apparel and accessories, everything from t-shirts to backpacks, check out mtgonlinestore.com and use promo code MARIN for 15% off your next order. And it also supports the show. Link is down below. For those who saw my Bolas's Trash Cannon combo deck the other week, this deck is going to share a lot of similarities to it, but if you're new here, hello! We're going to try to do some things that may or may not be considered fair and balanced. So we're going to get Mystic Forge, which is like a birthday gift from WotC that we're going to open up and have some fun with. So Mystic Forge, as we said before, is basically Experimental Frenzy. We can look at the top card of our library at any time and we can cast it if it's an artifact or colorless card. And we only have 13 cards in the main deck that don't fit that criteria, but if they don't, we can tap Mystic Forge, pay a life, and exile the top card of our library to fix it so that we can keep comboing off with Ethereum Sculptor. So Ethereum Sculptor is the main thing we're going to pair with Mystic Forge to be able to spit cards off the top of our library. So one Ethereum Sculptor is busted enough, being able to reduce all our artifacts costs and just machine gun artifacts off the top of our library is gonna be pretty awesome but if we can manage to get two ethereum sculptors which they are artifact creatures so we can get them themselves off of mystic forge if we get two of them we can basically spit out our entire deck and that's the plan we're going for today so to help this out we got some eggs chromatic sphere chromatic star and conjurer's bobble they are all one mana artifacts that can crack to draw a card and cracking hence the name eggs so with ethereum sculptor these things are going to cause zero mana and what they're gonna do for us is when we hit a land off the top with uh, Mystic Forge which tells us that we can't go on we crack an egg to draw past that land and continue to go off so once we have two ethereum sculptors or even one we can spit out a huge portion of our deck with the help of these eggs and then we need a bunch of zero drop creatures so we got Ornithopter, Memnite, and Frogmite so Frogmite is most likely gonna cause zero it's gonna be weird if it doesn't but we have so much artifacts in this deck that it's likely gonna cause zero mana and we just want to spit so much creatures that cause zero off the top of our library because we want to pay off with our seal overseer now seal overseer is the main thing we want to find multiple copies of off of mystic forge because we are going to be churning through several cards in a turn and we're going to get out multiple seal overseers and all those zero drop creatures are going to be a nice payoff to put counters on and then arcbound ravager is what we're pairing as a secondary one kind of pair with ink moth nexus because like i said we're spitting out so many artifacts off the top of our deck that we're going to have enough stuff to sacrifice to arcbound ravager to throw onto an ink moth nexus to one shot our opponent in the air and then of course we have a little bit of mana production in mox opal and springleaf drum this is going to help crack eggs after we machine gun these things off the top of our deck those eggs are going to be pretty easy to crack we got a total of 13 lands which does sound like a little bit but we also got the play set of springleaf drum and mox opal so it's if we have 21 lands and we also got a bunch of eggs to crack if we need to find a mana source so it's fine onto the sideboard we got a couple copies of welding jar to bring in just in case our opponent has artifact disruption and we know they're bringing it in we need to bring in the welding jars to make sure that our mystic forge survives as well as our steel overseers and then we got two copies of dispatch is just a little bit of removal just because we need to make sure we can deal with eidolon or the great revel that's another good reason that we have wear and tear at the bottom down there hits enchantments um it's also relevant to hit stony silence that's the main reason we have it and then we got a play set of relic of progenitus and we do want a lot of artifacts in our board because we do want our deck to be mostly artifacts to help out the mystic forge so that's our form of graveyard removal and then we got a couple copies of defense grid i love playing this card in combo decks because it helps protect against counter spells and then we got two copies of gear up or aether grid obviously pretty good against the creature based decks also makes us be able to do things through a stony silence too so that's about it i'll get the stream started and i'll see you in the first round got a game here against this is redonkulous and we are on the draw with some mystic affinity and i'm going to keep this hand we got the ethereum sculptor and the mystic forge this looks really good i'm pretty sure i've said their name this is redonkulous many many times 
Oh, I have to fix my F6 keys. I still didn't do that since the last stream. What's up, Steph X? And uh, you turned 21 today? You're going to go to dinner tonight? Awesome, man. Happy birthday, Papaya Guy 22. I thought you were 22 years ago. I thought that's why 22 was in your username. Happy birthday. I hope you have a nice day today. Go and, go and enjoy yourself. Okay, so start on Memnite, start on Mox, Darkstill Citadel, and now we can play an Ethereum Sculptor. Play a Frogmite, and then pass the turn. So next time we get out Mystic Forge, and then we just start comboing off. So this is turn three. Just please don't kill my Ethereum Sculptor. Ooh! I love this card so much. I have yet to play with this card, but I want to play with this card so bad. It's one of my new favorite cards because I've always wanted a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Flying Haste. I always have. Ever since Mantis Rider, ever since Storm Chaser and Angel's like, where's the 2-2 two -two Flying Haste for two? All right, so Glimmer Void, Mystic Forge, and we are going to combo off like crazy next turn, possibly this turn. So let's see how it go. Ink Moth Nexus, uh, we can exile that with Mystic Forge, see if we can hit a zero drop or something. That's a mox, so play a mox, uh, keep the new mox, cast a free star off the top, um, and then let's play, or let's crack the chromatic star for blue, draw past the Glimmer Void. There's an Arcbound Ravager. Uh, I think I'm going to play a Steel Overseer and just go to combat. And now next turn, untapping with all this mana, we should be able to do awesome stuff. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be very, very fun. Oh no, they're bolting our Steel Overseer, but that's fine. I wanted my Ethereum Sculptor. Cloud of the Dominus, so it's getting plus two, plus two, Shroud. That's fine. We're about to go off right here. Like, we're gonna play our entire deck. All right, let's do it. Conjurer's Bobble for free. And now that's two free cantrips that draw past lands. Conjurer's Bobble for free. Memnite. Uh, let's exile that with Mystic Forge. Uh, float a blue with Mox. Play a new Mox. Uh, keep the untapped Mox. Play a Springleaf Drum. Uh, let's crack a Bobble. And let's just say, I don't know, Mox. It doesn't matter. Um... Ooh, we whiffed again. Okay, so let's go with crack another Conjurer's Bobble. Doesn't matter. Another Mox. Play a free Springleaf spring Drum. Play a free Conjurer's Bobble. Play a free Ornithopter. Uh, all right. Let's use Springleaf Drum to tap Ornithopter for blue. Let's use Springleaf Drum to tap Memnite for blue. Let's play a second Mystic Forge. Let's exile the top card of the Mystic Forge. There's Ethereum Sculptor. Okay, so play Ethereum Sculptor, and now we cast our entire deck for free. Play Ornithopter, Chromatic Star. Okay, well that we can't play for free, so let's crack a bobble for a bobble. Play an Ornithopter, play a Frogmite, play a Chromatic Sphere, play an Arcbound Ravager, play an Arcbound Ravager, play Steel Overseer, play a Chromatic Star. Um, okay, we gotta we got not deck ourselves here. Play a free Ravager. Play a free Ravager, and now we just sack everything to a creature and just, uh, you know. And then we just sack everything and put it all on the, on a, on a thing. Always yes, always yield. And now let's see if our opponent makes us go through it. Uh, always yes. And that is how Mystic Affinity works. It is epic and super cool. I love it so much. <laughs> this is one of my new favorite- this is one of my new favorite decks. I swear, dude. This is insane. Sack one of the redundant Mystic Frogs. Um, sack a Ravager. <laughs> Put it on itself. Yes. And sack Ravager to itself. And put all the counters on Ethereum Sculptor. Yes. Go to combat. Attack, attack, attack. Boosh. <laughs> 
got there. That's turn three. That was turn three. No, wait, was that turn three? No, it's turn four. All right, <laughs> well, got there against blue red. <laughs> All right, so against blue red, they're gonna bring in like a braid or something. So bring in welding jar. Um, I could bring in defense grid. They're gonna have spell pierce probably, um, but it's all right. So let's take out a chromatic sphere and another chromatic sphere. Run it like that. No, let's keep my. Oh, it's too late. So the welding jars are in. This hand looks good. Let's keep that. That was nuts. I was thinking defense grid, but I don't know. I don't think they're gonna have spell pierce. All right, play a free mem knight. Play dark steel. Play chromatic star. Pass. Chocks of steam vents. Dread horde arcanist. So they're gonna start blowing up our boys. All right. Let's get out Steel Overseer. Play a Frog Might. And pass. They play green, yeah, it's for, um... It's for Crashing Footfalls to hard cast. Because I assume they're a Crashing Footfalls deck. Uh, because they're playing Dreadhorde Arcanist, so I would assume so. They are just prowess, though. Yeah, they're, they're just prowess. They're not even trying to do anything too crazy. They are going to mutagenic on that thing. <laughs> Alright, so they're processing up their storm chaser, trying to reverse nut on us. Um, I can double block to kill this Dreadhorde Arcanist, and that's probably worth it. I am gonna do that. I'm gonna lose a Mem Knight, but it's fine. I think it's worth it. Alright, untap. I kinda wanna crack this star, see if I can get some more Gucci to play. It is a Welding Jar. We'll play a Welding Jar, play a Spire... Play Ethereum Sculptor, take this boy up, go attacking for three. And see if our opponent has Assault Strobe. Another Storm Chaser. Okay, so no Assault Strobe, that's a good sign. Serum Visions. All right, we might be able to raise this. We should be able to. I think that Steel Overseer is getting there pretty good. Well, it's our own form of prowess, basically. I would like to draw Mystic Forge. We're getting pretty flooded. For a 13 land deck, we're getting pretty flooded this game. We could very well die next turn, though, so we gotta watch out. Okay, there's an Arcbound Ravager. That is pretty Gucci as well. Oh, it only costs one. I forgot. <laughs> because of the Ethereum Sculptor. It's a one mana Ravager. All right. Uh, let's tick up, play land, go to combat, get in for seven. All right, so one of us is about to win here. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, could I have won? Could I have won there? Oh, no, I think I could have won there. No, I wasn't ready. I, I tried not to click through. I tried. I could sack Dark Steel, Welding Jar, and, and this, and then put five counters on something. No, I wouldn't have got there, but we would have gotten close. All right, so I didn't have to do that. All right, so we're good. I didn't screw up. But one of us is about to win. Adelisa Cinderwind doesn't do it. Why did they pay four mana for that? And just passes. All right, we won. We won. All right, so go to combat. Whatever they don't block, I just commit all on Ravager. Yep. That'll do it, unless they have, like, quad gut shot. Alright, time to start sacking some stuff. And sack Ravager to itself. 
And throw all the counters onto Steel Overseer. Yep. And, yep. And take nine to the face. And we got there against Blue Red Wizard Prowess using that new uh, flying dude. I love it. Yo, what up guys? Marin here with her typical per video speed up session. So usually speed up the longest game in the video and spoiler alert, this was not the longest game. This was not the longest round, but we are going to speed up the first game of this round. We are going to have a sped up round later on in the video, but we're speeding up this game specifically because it was a very awkward game as you will soon come to find out. Um, so I'm going to leave the next game of this round non-sped up so you guys can enjoy that because it was really awesome. But this game was way longer than it should have taken. Um, so get the really cool, like, turn one fro double frogmite memnite play. So five power on turn one. Yeah, cool. But after that, we didn't really have anything to do. Opponents able to start pathing our dudes and snap pathing our dudes. And we just keep top decking little dudes like ornithopters and ethereum sculptors that don't really beat down for much. We're really hoping for a mystic forge, obviously but we're not really getting one we're just getting dudes who just keep getting countered and or path we're only able to resolve small dudes like frog mites and mem knights and those colonnades are really holding us back but our opponents really top deck and nothing um they're able to timely there to stay alive a little bit but they're not even attacking us with their colonnades so i have no idea what they're really going for they're top decking nothing but lands and we eventually are able to get out another steel overseer and start activating it and then we're able to start getting in as they don't find an answer to steal overseer they already snapped path uh earlier so that snap was only able to get an opt to which they didn't really find an answer they're able to get out of the fairy that tucks a dude but soon realize that they are dead we move on to sideboarding and i will go ahead and, and resume normal speed for the next game hope you enjoy all right this hand actually looks good i'm gonna keep that just because of steel overseer but if it's path we are literally doing nothing All right, so Mox Opal, Ornithopter, uh, Dark Steel Citadel, Steel Overseer, pass. All right, we're gonna find out if our opponent has a Stony Silence and or, you know, what do you call that thing? Path to Exile. Cycle Hieroglyphic Illuminations. All right, time to find out if they got Stony or not. They don't have Stony. They're on Double Island here. <gasps> Mystic Forge. All right. Please resolve. Don't, don't logic. Oh, thank goodness. All right, so next turn we get out Mystic Forge and just start going off. And we have an egg to support it. So this is, this is really awesome. So hopefully this works out. We're going to find out. Would you consider cutting Conjurer's Bobble for Thoughtcast? No, not at all. Because um, Thoughtcast is not an artifact, so it doesn't work with Mystic Forge. Gotta have as many artifacts as possible. An opponent field of ruins glimmer void sure so they're tapping out so we get to do stuff here this is at our draw step yeah i don't think i need to float anything it's whatever i don't have anything to search out unfortunately all right so let's see what we can get here mystic forge there's a free spring leaf drum Um, oh, I can cast that. So Springleaf Drum, tap for a blue, tapping Ornithopter. Uh, cast that Steel Overseer. Ornithopter. Mem Knight. Exile that Glimmer Void with Mystic Forge. Uh, play a Mox. Keep the new Mox. Mem Knight. All right, uh, crack the bobble, putting back a mox. Draw past that wear and tear. Uh, play a free chromatic star. Crack it for blue. Draw past that dark steel citadel.
and it looks like we have fizzled. So let's activate Steel Overseer. And go to combat. Oh, you know what? I actually could have activated uh, Ink Moth Nexus and put a counter on it. So that's what I could have done with that redundant mana. But it's alright. I don't think that's going to be too relevant. You misread Mystic Forge? Thought it worked like Bolas' Citadel? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. And they do have a Supreme Verdict, so that's a bummer. But we do still have our Mystic Forge on the table, which is great. So, opponent's gonna be lame and wipe our board. Alright, so let's cast a free Chromatic Star. Cast a free Mem Knight. Oh, there's Ethereum Sculptor, yes! Perfect. Play a free Ethereum Sculptor. Uh, let's tap for a blue here. Play a Steel Overseer. Play a Mem Knight. Exile the Glimmer Void with our Mystic Forge. Play a free Conjurer's Bobble. Play a free Springleaf Drum. Um, let's crack this Conjurer's Bobble on a Steel Overseer. Play a free Chromatic Star. Play a free Chromatic Star. Um, let's use this Springleaf Drum to make some blue mana. Crack a star for blue. Draw past that Ink Moth Nexus. Um, let's play that Ravager. Um, or let's play a Ink Moth Nexus first and let's play that Ravager for the colorless mana. All right. Sacrifice this Mox to Ravager. Play that Mox off the top. Uh, use our one blue mana floating for your defense grid. Cast a free Chromatic Sphere. Cast a free Chromatic Sphere. Uh, tap for a mana here. To... I don't think it's safe to play that Ravager off the top because then I could fizzle. So let's actually draw it with this Chromatic Star. Okay, there's our Ethereum Sculptor. Boom! Now we can play everything for free. Play a free Ravager. And let's... Fizzle. So go to combat, and we have nothing that can attack right now, so pass, and we should have lethal next turn by sacking stuff to Ravager and throwing it onto an Inkamoth Nexus. See if our opponent has another Wrath. And they do not have another Wrath, and they end up scooping it up. That first game was very awkward. I'll likely have to speed that one up, but that game was cool. So that is what we're trying to do with Mystic Forge. Play it, get an Ethereum Sculptor, and then just toss everything onto the board. The eggs are important. Like I said, I'm learning how to play this deck. Do not sideboard out the eggs. The eggs are very important to draw past those lands. Very important. This deck has some little ins and outs, little tricks here that are just like, you don't know at first, but you learn them. You learn them, you learn how to play the deck, and I'm a noob at it, obviously, since I just brewed it, and this is my first time playing it. But if you build it out there, learn these little tips and tricks. Awesome. Got a game here against Resolute, or Reza One Ute. And we are on the draw with Mystic Affinity, and this hand has Ethereum Sculptor and Mystic Forge, but no mana. So I'm going to have to mulligan. Alright, um, that is a turn one seal over here. So I'm going to keep that, throw away one of these Springleaf Drums. Done. So we're going on the beatdown plans here with Steel Overseer on Tyrion 1, hoping that that will be enough to get there. Opponent is on. Soul Sisters. Okay. They're going to gain a little bit of life here off of our two dudes, but hopefully that ends up not mattering. They're going to have a lot of blockers, though, through, like, Ranger Captain of Eos and stuff. Give me another creature. Okay, that's a creature, technically. 
versus Citadel, Memnite. Playing our entire hand here. All right, yeah, they get to they get to gain a life. All right, play Ethereum Sculptor. They gain another life, play a free Springleaf Drum. Which is basically a mox. With Ethereum Sculptor out, Springleaf Drum is basically a mox. Tap for a mana, seal Overseer, and pass. Two two drops and two one drops. You know, two two drops on turn one. Seems solid. Now, if I can top deck a Mystic Forge, my life would be complete. Second Plains is a time for an Ariok Champion or an Ajani's Pride Mate. Martyr of Sand. So they're on Martyr Proc. They're not on Soul Sisters. I have not fought Soul Sisters in like four years. Um, I have every single time I say it's Soul Sisters, it always ends up being Martyr Proc. So it is Martyr Proc. It is not Soul Sisters. Even though Soul Sisters does run Martyr of uh, Sand sometimes. So it could still be. Could still be. Ooh, it's pretty good. Doubling up on those boys. I will offer the double block with Memnite. I'm, I'm fine with you trading off both your things for a Memnite for a zero drop. Zero drop, kill two, one drops. I'll take that. Take that value. I'm gonna yield through this turn. They're gonna crack it and gain how much life? They go up to 34. And they have a Sarah Ascendant, unfortunately. So now we're gonna have to draw a Mystic Forge or else we just lose. But we are gonna be able to get two 1-1 one -one counters per turn on our, on our dudes. So eventually we'll be able to catch up to the size of that Sarah Ascendant. That life that I gave them off of playing creatures on turn one. The fact that they were on the play, that's what helped them um, gain the life they needed just barely for that uh, for the Sarah Ascendant because they would have actually been at 30. Yeah, that would have still been enough, so it didn't make a difference. But then I would have had this aggression being on the play, so I would have been able to attack the turn that they would have done this stuff last turn, or the, the next turn actually, so... Yeah, so the, the them being on the play made all the difference. Can I get a Ravager? Therium Sculptor. Okay. Still can't attack yet. You can attack us with that, Sarah, if you want, opponent. I'm totally cool with that. I will still yield through this turn. They have an Ariok champion up to 41. Time for them to start attacking. Another Sarah Ascendant! Oh no! Alright, opponent got the nuts. If they find like a Ranger Captain of Eos or a Ranger of Eos to find another Sarah Ascendant, it's just over. Is it time for them to start attacking? It is time for them to start attacking. Alright, but we're not dead yet. Chromatic Star, that's free. So play a free Chromatic Star. Crack the Chromatic Star for blue. Ooh! -hoo -hoo. Ooh! Alright, let's see what we can do here. 
We have how many attackers? We have five attackers. To the, so they're going to have to block with everything if we find a Ravager. Let's see how much... We don't have any eggs. So yeah, we uh, can fizzle here. Let's think about if we're going to fizzle or not. I think regardless, I have to go for something here. Okay. No, now everything's for sure free. There's another basically mox off the top. Okay, there's an egg. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, we don't have a Ravager to sack that mox, so play this mox. Uh, keep the new mox. Tab the mox, crack the egg. Play a bobble. Okay, perfect. And there's a star. Perfect. So we're gonna play our entire deck here, for sure. So our entire deck is on the table. What can we do? Um... Let's play this Dark Souls Citadel. Play the Forge. Play Ethereum Sculptor. Steel Overseer. So these Ornithopters in our deck are gonna save us. Use Mystic Forge. Memnite. Chromatic Sphere. Uh, tap a Memnite for blue, crack a star for blue, uh, crack a star for blue, play a Frogmite, crack a Conjurer's Bottle to drop past a Glimmer Void, play a Mox, Where's my Ravagers, dude? Keep the untapped Mox. Play a Bobble. Sack the Bobble on a Mox, it doesn't matter. There's a Ravager. Got another egg, which is great. See you over here. There's an Ornithopter, perfect. Sacrifice Bobble, draw past the Nexus. Play a Chromatic Sphere, play a Chromatic Star. Play a Chromatic Sphere. Play a Frogmite. There's another Ornithopter. All right, so we got blockers in the air now. Play a Ravager. Play a Forge. Play a frog. Ravager. Exile the top card with forge. Bobble. Uh, crack a star for blue. Memnite. Forge. Ornithopter. All right. I think that's enough. They're at 101. So now we can go attacking here and here. Might as well activate these. They know we're going to do it. Oh man, okay. Those those ornithopters are really saving us here. And we're gonna be able to triple block one. One of their dudes. Chumps. And that's it. Take six. Alright, pass the turn. And they concede! And that is how Mystic Affinity works. Alright, on to sideboard and against Soul Sisters. Gear per Aethergrid seems Gucci. Uh, Dispatch seems important. And I think that's all we need here. Oh, you know what? No. I probably need uh, Wear and Tear answers. Or I, need, I probably need Stony Silence answers. Um, 
Man, but Garrett Bray the Great and Dispatch seems so good. All right, but I gotta I gotta keep the artifact count in my deck high. So I think I'll just try to fight through it and just keep the bringing the wear and tears for the uh, the stony silences. All right, so this is a very egg heavy hand. Do I want do I want to keep an egg heavy hand or do I mole? Uh, I don't know about this. It doesn't really do much. I'm a mole. All right, I wish this hand had a mox, but I think that I should not go any lower than this. Because if I top deck a land, I'll be able to go Steel Overseer in turn two. And I think Steel Overseer in turn two is a reason to keep this. So let's throw away a um, Chromatic Star or Chromatic Sphere. I like Bobble better than Chromatic Sphere. I think the order goes Chromatic Star, Conjures, Bobble, Chromatic Sphere. Chromatic Sphere is not good. You were drinking, what do you want? Dude, Papaya Guy, it's your 21st birthday today and you're drinking? Why? You should choose to not drink the rest of your life because you're just gonna live less. You're gonna live not as long if you drink. And then you're gonna ruin your liver and you're gonna have a bad midlife crisis when you're 40 years old and you're gonna, you're just gonna be beer belly and, 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 and sad. So don't drink. It's not a good thing to do, Papaya Guy. I care about you, don't do it. You may hear a loud noise in the background. The neighbors are using the faucet, so it'll it'll be gone in a second probably. Got another bobble to crack. Got two eggs right next to each other. Joakovo is here. Joakovo, don't tell me you're screwing up. Also, I mean, I understand those old people who, who sip a little bit of wine every night because apparently it's scientifically healthy for you to do that every night. But I'm just like, hey, beer every day, party. No, that's not a good thing to do. Okay, so opponent is classic soul sisters. They are classic soul sisters. I can tell by Squadron Hawks and uh, Ariok Champions. Because uh, Martyr Proc does not play Ariok Champion. So finally, we've run into actual Soul Sisters. It's been quite a few years. There's a middle ground. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you do you. I wouldn't do it. Never have, never will. You've been drinking since 17? Dude, Dracova, what are you doing? That ain't good. Alright, um... I guess I cracked this bobble. No, because I know, I know I'm gonna play the, the Steel Overseer here. I don't need to crack the bobble. What's up, T1 Glistener Elf? Welcome, welcome. Yo, I answered your question in the Q&A. How you been doing? It's been a while. Alright, Squadron Hawk number two. Their squad's getting stacked. They're getting the life. I'm gonna F6 through this turn. I still, like, I said at the beginning of the stream I was going to, um, what do you call it? Fix my hotkeys so I can fix F6. And it's like three hours later and I still haven't done it. Keep forgetting. Responsibility, of course. Yeah, there you go, Jokovo. Gotta be responsible. All right, let's crack this bobble, see if we get a land or something. So I want to be able to play uh, Ravager, but also activate Ink Moth. Star, all right, two more eggs. I play Ravager. We be activating. I can attack with the Ornithopter for one. 
I don't need to... I don't want to swing with Memnite because I don't want to trade it off for two Squadron Hawks. I want to keep my dudes. Now, what I can do next turn is swing with Ink Moth, and I think swinging with Ink Moth forces them to block because I think that Ink Moth is actually lethal, right? Yeah, I think it's lethal. You've been getting over whatever you caught. It's the GD flu. But it's all good. T1 Stoneforge Mystic is precious as always. Well, that's good to hear. Glad you are getting better. Get well soon. You got the, the GD flu, man. It went to GDQ, you got the GD flu. You got the influenza. I mean, the opponent's not really going off, and they just scoop it up. Yeah, they're, they're sick and tired of that Steel Overseer ticking up and up and up, so... They just didn't want to deal with it anymore. They knew my Ink Moth was about to be lethal as well, and they were forced to be in a very bad spot, and they did not have lands for one and for two they did not have their Sarah ascendant so we got there against soul sisters and i'm glad to have finally fought classic soul sisters for once in like three or four years so that's cool yo what up guys post production there and here with a typical per video speed up session usually we speed up the longest game in the video and this was the longest game actually by five seconds the next longest game was five seconds shorter than this one we do this to make sure the video is not way longer than it should be but as i always say if you wanted to see the full games unedited unsped up and uncut from the video you can go to the twitch link down below in the description and watch the entire vod there so this was a sped up game uh, because our Mystic Forge didn't go exactly the way we planned it to because we did not get an Ethereum Sculptor, as you can see here. Uh, we got the Mystic Forge in general, which is awesome, so we can start spitting out a bunch of things off the top of our library. But without an Ethereum Sculptor, we're not quite playing our entire library. We're just playing a bunch of stuff per turn and just barely being able to survive to this uh, Colonian Tusker with the Rancor on it. Opponent does not find a Lightning Bolt. I assume they have Lightning Bolt in their deck, but we didn't see it. Spoilers. Um, so we're just hoping for no, like, aspect of Hydra or something out of nowhere to just kill us. We're able to stabilize and eventually grind out with that Mystic Forge because we just get a huge advantage off of it. I bring in Dispatch to kill things because, you know, they got a lot of big things. But I also bring in Welding Jar because I have a feeling that they're going to bring in, like, um, not Nature's Claim, but Destructive Revelry. Um, so in that game, they played a Stony Silence in turn two. So I'm like, okay, screw Dispatch, screw Welding Jar. I need to bring in the Wear and Tear. So I'm kind of just um, commentating this on the spot. I don't really remember what happened here. Oh, yeah, I remember this game. So the Narnam Renegades are very annoying because they're Death Touch. I was on the aggressive, but because of those things, it's very difficult. Um, now I get a Mystic Forge, start getting a bunch of value off the top. Unfortunately, I hit an Aether uh, Grid and just fizzle from there. So what I do now is declare blocks, uh, sack the Raver, uh, sack the other blocker to the Ravager, and put all the counters onto a Ethereum Sculptor. I end up um, getting so much stuff with the double Ethereum Sculptor. I play my entire deck, sack everything to Ravager, and throw all the counters onto Ethereum Sculptor and bop them in the face for 15 damage exactly. And that's what happens when you get out to Ethereum Sculptors. GG. Got a game here against Blind Tyrant, and we are on the draw with some Mystic Affinity. And let's see what they are up to. Nice Captain Lannery Storm avatar brings me back the memories when I played Captain Lannery Storm in Commander. One of my all-time favorite decks I've built. All right, so this hand doesn't have any more zero-drop dudes, so we cannot keep it. So close to. It has a Theorem Sculptor and the Mystic Forge and a Mox. So it would have been a beautiful hand if we had some uh, other zero-drop creatures to play to turn on this Mox. Because we also got the Springleaf Drum. So we're so close to making this work. But not quite. So maybe instead of Frogmite, we should be running a different zero-drop artifact like Mishra's Bobble. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Would you like to keep this? No, I'm gonna mulligan. And unfortunately, that one doesn't have any land, so I'm gonna have to mulligan again. We can still get to the mold, the mold of five nut. We did that in one of the other rounds. Again, spoiler alert.
Mulligilligan. Man, what is with this? All right, I have to go to four. All right, I'm keeping this. What am I throwing back? I need Glimmer Void, I need Mox, I need Memnite. And I need Springleaf Drum. So I'm throwing back Ravager and I'm throwing back Chromatic Sphere and I'm throwing back a star and hoping to get the Mystic Forge off the top, I guess. I'm trying to get the Mystic Forge off the top. You have my coast, so it looks like infect so far. I don't want to... Oh, wait. Okay, I was going to say I don't want to play anything to reveal what I'm on, but opponent Mulligan, they're probably on Neo form. So, since I drew the Steel Overseer, I think I want to play Magic now. I want to try. So I can throw out my entire hand here, which is good. So I'm actually trying. I'm actually going to try. Opponent, do you have the turn two? Show me Allosaurus Rider. Show me Neoform. Show it to me. Do you got it? There's the Allosaurus Rider. Show me the Neoform. And the opponent actually had the nut. Opponent had the nut. What can you really do? All right. I would F6, but F6 does not work. So I can right click and go heal through this turn, right? Yeah, I can. All right. So let's see if they can uh, whiff. Fizzle. See, this would be the perfect moment for a fizzle emote. I'm telling you, we need to get the fizzle emote. <laughs> and they had the shoal for the R talk, the onto talk, auto talk worm. I don't think there's any chance of them fizzling, but let's just see it go off anyways. This is one of the decks that's going to be the new thing to ban. Um, this is going to be the next bannable deck because um, London Mulligan is here now. Everybody was freaking out over Hogak for like the past two weeks, but now it's nerfed. But it's still insane, so I still think something else from it needs to get banned. But now that London Mulligan is here, this deck is going to be the new menace. I swear. Mm -hmm. This, the Neo brand deck is going to be everywhere. What does Fizzle look like? A fuse falling off dynamite or something? No, a Fizzle would be just like, it'd be a soda and it'd be like fizzing over the top, like overflowing. And it would, the bottle would say Fizzle. That would be the emote. It'd literally be a bottle reading emote with fizz coming out of the top of it. Or a, a bottle reading Fizzle. And they are going to combat. I'm not going to block. All right, opponent, you got 10 cards left in your library. Is your win con on the very bottom or is it not? Timmy Spirit Guide. Show me Fury of the Horde. You're wasting your Simian Spirit Guides. Show me the lightning storm. Give me, give me another spirit guide. Give me one more spirit guide. Is your last Simeon spirit guide on the very bottom of the deck? Yep, they had to draw some more. Is it on the very bottom? It might be on the very bottom. Oh, there it is. All right. There's a ritual. And metamorphose. Oh, they have metamorphoses to get to the very bottom. All right. I see how it is. Oh, we're just going for the lab man kill. All right. On a sideboarding, uh, I think that... Oh, we don't have Graft Digger's Cage, so I think that we just... Submit it right back and try to go fast. We gotta go fast, guys. If you are a GDQ subscriber, give me your GDQ Sanix in the chat. The madman kill? Yeah. We literally have, have, we did what they did earlier in the video. You'll see that. That was, that was nuts. That was, that was some nuts. 
I currently see no subscribers in the chat, so I will go take it upon myself to give you guys some nuts in the chat. All right, now we are on the play, and this time we're not going to mulligan. So, I mean, I, I meant mulligan before, but we do have to mulligan. So, got to mulligan that because we have no mana. All right, I will keep this one. So, I think I'm going to throw back a springleaf drum here. Because we can go turn one, Ornithopter, Memnite, Mox, Steel Overseer. And I think the star is important. You know what? Nah. I think the Springleaf Drum might be more important because it gives us more mana if we were to top deck a Forge. But then again, Chromatic Star. Yeah, we're going on the beatdown plan here, so just throw away Springleaf Drum. They can combo in your turn if you have defense grid. Oh yeah, that's right. They can go entirely at instant speed. But isn't uh no they gotta cast the uh the Allosaurus Rider at sorcery speed. So they can't. I Maybe mean, they get played and pass, but they would just do it on their turn if they could. You got the turn one off Simeon Spirit Guide. Show me Simeon Spirit Guide Manamorphos. All right, Serum Visions. Don't waste time thinking about Mulligan. Just keep every time. Good idea. That's a solid plan, actually. All right. See if we can find a Ravager or something else to play. <gasps> Evra, Evra Grace, thank you for your tier one subscription. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the marination. Enjoy your moons, your nuts, and your carns. Good to have you here. Now there's a now there's a subscriber here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So now now you can give me some nuts, Evra. Summoner's Pact gets the Allosaurus Rider. Yep. The crazy thing about this Neoform deck is it's got two of every card it needs, except, uh, actually, yeah, it does have two of every card it needs because it can work with, uh, so you got four Allosaurus Riders, four Summoner's Packs. You got four Neoforms, four Eldritch Evolutions. You got four, um, Nourishing Shoals, you're the one I think you have a singleton of. You got four, uh, Auto talk worms, I think, and then the four uh, world spine worms. Do you have that? No, I don't. I don't know if you do. Um, but you got metamorphose to make it more consistent. You got serum powder to make it more consistent. Simeon spirit guide for that free mana. There's the eldritch evolution, and let's see if they fizzle. I'm going to yield through this turn. And let's see if they get the back-to-back -back turn two combo kill. Because if they do, this deck needs to get banned. This is going to be the new Menace to Modern now with the... Uh, because this deck was a Menace and everybody was talking about it being a Menace. Back when uh, London Mulligan was tried on Moto a couple months ago. And it was since gone for a while. They took London Mulligan off of Moto. Went back to regular old Mulligan. Vancouver Mulligan. And now that the London Mulligan is back. Look at what this deck's doing. That was back to back turn 2 kill. Back to back. Like what am I supposed to do? The reason that Mystical Tutor got banned in Legacy, yeah, they this deck has two of everything. It's got two of everything it needs. Except Nourishing Shoal. But they can find, all they need is one. All they need to find is one. And when they draw seven cards off Gristlebrand, I'm pretty sure they can find one. And by the way, how did Gristlebrand get haste in the last game? What do they do to it to give it haste? Does Neoform give it haste? Because I don't think it does. Orbeerigmos enraged. Yeah, they even have Borberigmos too, to like also do uh, the the whole Allosaurus Rider thing again. 
So it's just such a synergistic deck and it's so easy to go off with it. You got so much consistency in that deck. This deck has like a 90% chance of going off on turn two. It's crazy. I'm just going to concede. I know they didn't fizzle. All right, so that is a uh, Neo brand for you. All right, deck. Give me Ethereum Sculptors. Give me eggs. Oh, what the heck? All four. All four Mystic Forges. Exile that. Okay, there's a star. Play a star. All right, play a Springleaf Drum. There's Ethereum Sculptor. All right. Play Ethereum Sculptor. Okay, here we go. Play a free- and we have an egg, too. Oh, man. Uh, all right, so... Hmm. All right, crack this. I think I gotta draw past that. So make a blue. Memnite. Okay, there's a Conjurer's Bobble. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good. There's an Arcbound Ravager. All right, play the Ravager. Crack the bobble on a mox. Uh, all right. Play... Steel Overseer. Play a Glimmer Void. Play a Steel Overseer. And we fizzled. Okay. Wait, do we win here? I think I sack everything to Ravager and I win. They don't have mana up. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, that's not a Thopter Foundry. Attack with Ornithopter. Sack everything to Ravager. That should be enough, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Oh. And itself, right? One, two, three, four, five. 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, he's 2 power now. 3 power, 4 power, 5 power, 6 power, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that's enough. Wait, let me go to blocks. See if see if the opponent's going to do any effects before damage. So yeah, this should do it. That's how that's how it works right there. That's how the deck works. Spit out the entire deck, sack everything to Ravager, throw it on a dude, and get in with that dude. And uh, Ornithopter is a perfect candidate for that. Yeah, they see. They're they're doing the math. They're dead to that Ornithopter. And we got there against Grixis Urza, taking him down with some Mystic Affinity. Who's the better artifact deck now? All right, I'll take it. All right, so you might hear a loud noise in my background for the outro of this video, but we are going to wrap it up right here. We ended up with six total wins, and the deck, I man, this deck has a learning curve, dude. It takes a little bit to learn how to play affinity in general, given this kind of affinity. At first, I felt like I was sideboarding all wrong, taking out the wrong stuff. I feel like you need your eggs really bad in this deck. And I really think I want to find a way to really get uh, Mystic Forge out. I just want to guarantee to find it, you know? And if not Mystic Forge, maybe I should also add a couple Karns. So like four Mystic Forge, two Karns, just so I have some really good bombs to hit. Because I, I want a payoff. Like this deck really wants a payoff. It's not, it doesn't have Vault Scourge, Signal Pest, and Cranial Plating. Therefore... It's got a harder time beating down naturally, but you know what? It actually worked. We were able to get down turn one Steel Overseer pretty often, actually very, very often, and just beat down the natural affinity way. And if that didn't work, then the Mystic Forge went off. So, you know what? I'll take one of the two. And it does the job. And our record proved it. And... This deck is super sweet. Mystic Forge is honestly super sweet. It's insane when it starts going off. Obvi obviously, you need the Ethereum Sculptor. Otherwise, you're probably going to get like two or three things off of it before you fizzle or before you run out of mana. But that's enough to be like enough of a value bomb right there.
And I think that having all those zero drop creatures really helps, especially with Mox Opal on turn one, being able to get out a two drop on turn one, being uh, Ethereum Sculptor or Seal Overseer. Also, I really love how Ethereum Sculptor turns Springleaf Drums into basically Moxes. Um, Frogmite, honestly, it, it's good when you start comboing off because it's another free creature to drop, but honestly, it's cuttable for some other good tech. Maybe you want some more zero drop artifacts like Bobbles just to like help you just thin your deck to find Mystic Forges or to find a mana source to like get your stuff out. There's a lot of like things you can try in this deck. There's a lot of tryable stuff. If you do run uh, snow covered islands to run um, to run the Arkham's Astrolabes, then you don't get access to uh, wear and tear and gear up your Aethergrid and dispatch in the sideboard. Uh, which kind of hurts, but then again, that card's really cool. I went through so many iterations brewing this deck, so let me know in the comments down below if you have any ideas for it. But the deck can definitely be tinkered with, but I love, like, put this aside, and the rest of it was was fine. The rest of it was good. It worked out well. We got a decent winning record. Uh, like, we get screwed over by, like, controlling mid-range two-for-one decks like Mardu Pyro and Jund. Um, although, you know, against a majority of things, affinity decks have always been pretty solid. It's always been in the top, in the, in the tiers, in the meta for as long as modern existed. And there's a reason why, because it can just really go off really quickly. So, uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think about that deck. Hit that like button if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new for the jankiest, the gameplay every other day. Thank you very much to all the sponsors and the patrons. And like I always say, if you wanted to pick up today's deck while also supporting the channel, you can get your cards in the link down below, the decklist link. That is our affiliate link with TCG Player. And uh, if you get the deck there, it supports the channel greatly. So I would super appreciate it. If you were going to pick up the deck anyways, consider picking it up there. All right, guys, I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.